Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Cohen and I have a very special guest, uh, and uh, we want to talk about uh, a very timely book that's coming out. But why don't you tell about our guest, John? Well, Art, uh, you and I have met Leonard uh, Simchek many years ago. Mm. And uh, as it turns out, we all remembered each other, which <laughs> at my age is kind of amazing. Uh, oh, yeah, but... uh, John, by the way, it was long enough ago <laughs> that I had a landline of his that didn't work. So uh, I had to make that, sure to get his that, mobile phone. That's ancient history. Right. Anyway. Anyway, our guest's name is Leonard Simchek, mm -hmm. and he, get this, he has so much to talk about. We have said to him, no, we don't want to talk about this, that, the other thing. We just want to talk about your book. He's got a new book coming out, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's called uh, Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol. Now, get this, last year he came out with Bob Cratchit's Christmas Carol, so He's obviously on to something here with, with, with the Christmas-themed books. Let's, let's meet Leonard Simchuk and talk about the book. Hi, and look at him. He's in, his, he's in his Christmas red. Thank you. <laughs> hey, great to be with you guys, Art and John. Such a treat. No, thank Our you. pleasure. By, by the way, with the, with the red shirt, uh, who knew? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, now, Leonard, you are you are a psychotherapist. You're a lecturer. You're an author, but the most recent effort is Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol. Let, if I may, let me go back to the first book of the series, which is Bob Cratchit's Christmas Carol. Tell us how that started. What you got? Why you got that idea? Well, you know, I, I was a great fan. I am a great fan of uh, Charles Dickens. And uh, I looked at that story, and, you know, Bob Cratchit never changed at the end. So, you know, Scrooge had this character arc of going from a skinflint and greedy to generosity. But Bob, at the end of the book, didn't really change. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if the spirits, the three spirits, visited Bob Cratchit. And that's, that started the beginning of this idea. And I says, well, we have to go to the past because what would create a man to work for 20 years in this horrific work environment with this horrible man? And so the spirit of Christmas past had to take him back into the past where he, he saw that his alcoholic father sold him into a blackings warehouse for, to make shoe polish. Now, this actually happened to Charles Dickens. His father went to prison and Dickens worked in a warehouse. So I took a little bit of Dickens' actual life and said, well, let's make it into Bob Cratchit. Wow. And so Bob Cratchit had to go back and see how his beliefs, he learned to believe that he wasn't worthy. He couldn't make anything of himself. He had to work for somebody else. And so, so the past showed him how his beliefs kept him entrenched in this life of misery because he was miserable and depressed working for Scrooge. And then, of course, the spirit of Christmas present had to bring him to the realization that the, the power that he has is in the present. And the spirit of Christmas future says, well, the choices you make affect your future. And so he had to go on this character arc to really change and, and let go of his old beliefs that kept him entrenched with Scrooge, and that began his journey. And that's that's the Bob Cratchit's Christmas Carol is all about his incredible journey to really self empowerment. Wow, what a wonderful, wonderful tale for the Christmas season, but really all year round. And I, you know, forgive me if I just say that it's a little obvious that it was written by a psychotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. You know, I and I. I, I, I think that we all, now this is for anyone who writes, you know, we, exp we, we express ourselves to health. And, you know, any of the characters I write reflect a little part of me. And so really any type of our writing is healing because we're expressing ourselves through characters. And so I grew up in a family with adversity. My, I was a single mom, raised four kids. And so I love stories where 
where in, characters have to overcome adversity. And that's kind of a theme in all my books because that inspires me to overcome any adversity in my life. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I am very impressed by your analysis as a writer of the original Christmas Carol that Bob Cratchit's character never changed. Because as a writer, that's one of the things you want your characters to do. You want them to grow, change, you know. Uh, and Bob Cratchit wasn't the bad guy. Usually we want our bad guys to remain bad guys, right? But the good guys changed. Bob Cratchit didn't change. And this is a fascinating premise, a wonderful idea for a book. Uh, and I assume that knowing you, it's a family book. Yes, yes. Well, as a matter uh, of fact, I had so that so individuals. I've had one woman who she she read this to her family numerous times. So because it is a family book, it's a it's a you know Christmas time. I want to feel good, and um, you know that's that's what Christmas to me is about. It creating this Christmas spirit of uh, really being in a place where hmm, I can spread this Christmas joy. So yeah. uh, there's, how many books are in the series so far? Where there's two. So Bob Cratchit is the first. Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol is the second. And then the third, I'm not going to, no spoiler alert here, but I'm working on the third that will be out next year. Well, that's, that's great. great. So and where can people uh, uh, find these uh, uh, books? Well, you know, they can get on Amazon or um, on bobschristmas.com. So you can go to my website, bobschristmas.com, and uh, they'll, you know, a book trailer, and uh, they can get all the information, or just go to Amazon. So tell us about Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol. So, you know, Tiny Tim is a very endearing character. You know, we, we love Tiny Tim. He's 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 got a crippled legs. He's got this infirmity, and he has a crutch. And Bob Cratchit carries Tim on his shoulders. And I was thinking, hmm, I wonder what kind of a so he, this is my psychological perspective. What kind of a character did Tiny Tim have? And I thought, you know, here's a, a little boy who really he's he's got these infirmity in his legs, and he's got a brother who picks on him and bullies him all the time. And he, like Bob, he keeps his feelings to himself. He doesn't express himself. And he really hates his life, but he doesn't want to share it with him. So he creates this, you know, pleasant demeanor to the world. But, you know, underneath, he's got a lot of demons going on that he's got, also got to go visit his spirit of Christmas past. And so with him, I created three spirits, but they're three kids. So, of course, if the spirit world is going to visit a ch child, you have to have children as spirits. And so we have three endearing children <laughs> who visit Tiny Tim and take him, of course, to his past and uh, also looking at his present and the choices he can make in his future. And he has to deal with, because he's got this horrible brother, Matthew, who picks on him and, and bullies him. And the other kids call him Crutchet. And he's got to really deal with his own inner world and um, get to a place where he can really be more empowered. It's it's moving from a disability to inability. Again, how to overcome adversity so he's able to really uh, live a more healthier, loving life. Hmm. Well, I, I know you're an excellent writer, and I can I can see as you describe these these uh, plots uh, a little bit of the Dickensian darkness uh, <laughs> in in the stories. You know, there's. It, 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 it's always a more uplifting story when the hero has to has greater adversity to overcome. So in some cases, and Dickens is a good example, it gets really dark. You know, this is this is bad stuff. How can they ever get out of this? You know, and yeah, uh, so I can see that I can see that in these books. Yeah, so so Tiny Tim has he's suffering. So all of us suffer at some point or another. And so I wanted to to take a look at suffering. Hmm, what is it that uh, creates suffering? And so for Tiny Tim, yes, he has his physical pain. He's bullied. Uh, he's got some psychological suffering. Hmm, how can we overcome our suffering? Because again, that's more of a psychological theme. So all of us face have suffer in our life at various different points. And how can we overcome the suffering so, again, we can bring more joy into our life? So, again, that is kind of a, an undercurrent of the book. Hmm. Well, you know what, Leonard? I think these are bound to be classics. 
they're going to live forever. And you know what? Right. Uh, once you get once you get the, the movie deal done, a Christmas story better watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I I don't want to ruin the spoiler alert, but I think I know what the third book is going to be. All right. Well, you you tell it, me. It's going to be Fezziwig. You know, I, I, well, that's, that's, you know, the, the character has to be in a Christmas Carol, obviously. Right. Sure. And well, so I, I, you know, I, I chose, um, but I'm not going to tell you. So I, I made a list of all the characters in a Christmas Carol and says, well, okay, who's going to be the third person? And uh, it's going to be intriguing. I think uh, people won't um, normally choose this particular character. It's got a bit of a twist in there. Okay, yeah. well, great. Well, we'll have to have you back uh, next year. Will you have it done for Christmas a year from now? Let's see. Yes. Great. So we'll have that. Um, and well, meanwhile, uh, we'll have you back to talk about all your other activities. You are, dare I say it, a person over 50. <laughs> yes, right? I, yeah. I, so, I'm definitely over 50. So right. you're enjoying your second act as we are. As, as our audience. Lots to talk and about some there. of our audience right. needs to learn how to loosen up a little bit and, and get the most out of the second act because we're living longer, healthier lives. And you're in the business of helping people like uh, us. And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I've come to learn, um, John and Art, that you know, the second half can be a, an, an amazing life. Yes, you have to do cataract surgery, and yes, you have other surgeries, but, you know, we have the wisdom. You know, we've get, garnered wisdom over the years that we can actually use that wisdom to our advantage and create an amazing life, because we're supposed to have an amazing life. If not now, when, you know? Right, right. Well, well this for Art and I, our wisdom... Our wisdom comes from talking to folks like you. Wow, that well done, John. Really well. Oh, done. Well, well said, John. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. that. Was, that's brilliant, John. Just brilliant. <laughs> okay, so by the way, so if uh, uh, some some of uh, you uh, folks uh, need to double check, go to the uh, description below, and we'll tell you where you can go find uh, the books and uh, links and uh, a link to a very special uh, trailer that uh, our mutual friend Mark Sebi did with uh, uh, Leonard and uh, about this book. And it's gonna be a fun, a fun read. Go get it. And thank you for being with us, Leonard. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. And thank you too for having me. I really enjoyed this, uh, our, our interaction. Our pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.